Hey guys, welcome back to Big FM, and you are watching and listening up to hashtag the Blue Mike. And here we're going to be telling you again that there is someone special who's come up, who is a singer, as we all know, because that's how they come to be connected with us in the celebrity artist zone. But interestingly, he is also soon going to be a doctor. And why a doctor? Because he is doing some research work, as I was just hearing it out, and research on something which is very interesting, which is basically all uh, the important. element of the cuisines of the north indian people i could say and i wish to know more about him who is it guys let's have him on board so hi would you love to introduce yourself to us and to our audience please hello everyone uh, my name is tk lamtor i'm a singer songwriter from nagaland could you love to, uh, to tell about your name and the complexity also of it because i really was not able to read or make it out that how do you really pronounce it actually my birth name is an ancestral name Mm, it's pronounced as Siddi Kamzak, so it's really hard. It's okay. it's like a tongue twister, even harder than scientific names. So I usually go by the name T K Lamter. <laughs> ah, that's that's so sweet of you. But T K, let's let's get to understand this. How did music come to you? Like, was there a time into your school days, or was it the basics being at your home that you know music was something that you grew up with? Or music was something that stuck up to you, and you were like, "I really want to make myself into this field now." Actually, speaking of music in general, uh, I was introduced to music quite early. Um, I was probably second in second standard when my parents made me take uh, classical piano lessons. Then from there on, it went on. Music became like. Um, really important thing in my life and i joined a choir i started taking all this classical vocal lessons and then i accidentally turned out to be a singer because there was this one competition and like the, there were no participants from our, our uh, house so uh, they asked me to perform since i do music so i thought why not give it a try and i actually participated and i i won the <laughs> competition so that's how i discovered oh my maybe i can sing <laughs> wow that sounds quite interesting so there is that that's how they say that you know everything in your life happens for a reason so perhaps yes. you were introduced to music quite early because they knew that you were going to be one day on the stage and be entertaining all the audiences around <laughs> Quite interesting. The so first and the foremost, congratulations on your EP, Chasing Foxes. Thank so you it's so been much. one of the best EPs that we have been really been building up into the recent times, <laughs> and a lot of work must have been definitely going inside of it. Yeah. So tell us something about the lyrical and the musical elements in this EP. Okay, so uh, back in 2019, I had released a couple of songs before that, so I thought, okay, it's finally time. I'll try out my very own EP. So I started working on our EP, but I was confused as to what my EP was going to be about. Then later in 2019, uh, I was diagnosed with social anxiety and chronic insomnia. So I was going through a really hard time, you know, trying to focus on music and my personal battles with you know, social anxiety and chronic insomnia. So I thought, okay, this is what I should write about since I always write about my experiences. So then I got the thing, my theme for the EP and I started writing about my struggles, the emotions I went through uh, as I suffered from all these things and the different levels, different levels of situations and emotions that I went through in a timeline. So I wrote them accordingly. And I even put out a single hoping that I'll be able to put out my EP in 2020. So Lights was out as a promo single. I even shot a video for that. But then the lockdown happened and, you know, the work had to get derailed. and not. So it took so much time. And then I got into my PhD thing and things got slower. And I was, I was just happy, you know, I just finally got to put it out right now. Like Even it's been like two years after <laughs> I started making the EP. So that has been the journey. Absolutely amazing. So uh, who were some of the artists and what were the sounds that you were listening to while you were creating this EP? I actually listened to a lot of underground artists. Okay. Uh, 
So I do was listening to a lot, but while writing songs, I try not to uh, listen to other artists because I feel like my art gets diluted in that sense. You know, getting influenced, getting inspiration is one thing, but like musically getting influenced by another artist, I don't feel that good. So usually I just shut myself from all other music and I try experimenting sounds. I'll be doing weird things with my keyboard. <laughs> with the guitar and I'll just experiment. I'll tr I was just trying to find my own sound. So I completely shut myself from the other music. Ah, so you, like, you are like one of those persons who says that right now I'm into my work in progress mode. So don't yeah. disturb me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite interesting. So it's a great sounding EP, but behind one, you know, there's, there's a lot more emotional conflict, as you yeah. said. And during this pandemic time, I perhaps everyone had to understand these things about themselves, that there is a fight which always constantly yes. goes inside us. True, so true. before, maybe because we never thought about ourselves and we never had the time mm -hmm. to think about ourselves. And this yeah. was a time where it brought us an absolute perfect one-on-one -on -one battle with yourself. Yes. So uh, how do you think, you know, as an artist, everyone is very sensitive and very emotional when you talk about yeah. an artistic person's yeah. life. Uh, not like what people say that, I mean, they have nothing to think and worry about because they're very good artists. So how does this emotional side help you in becoming a better person on your creative field? Actually, when the lockdown started, like you said, we, we get this one-on-one uh, -on -one time with ourselves to reflect on ourselves. So that's when we get to discover our demons. <laughs> and, <Right. you> know, <laughs> so initially, it started out really bad for me because I started doubting everything my artistry, you know, I had no approach uh, to the outside audience because of the lockdown, everything was done online. So I was going through a really hard time, but it also made me realize that, you know, uh, having this lockdown was kind of a like mm, a blessing in disguise. See, I got diagnosed with social anxiety, I had chronic insomnia, I couldn't sleep for days and all, fine. But through that only I could discover like uh, the, the the deeper sides that was inside me. And, you know, I got to reflect more about life. And I also realized that it was just not me who goes through the journey of, you know, getting all this self-conflict, you know. So that really inspired me to write and put it uh, on my, you know, songs in an art form so that people who listen to can know that, you know, they're not alone. Especially when it comes to mental health, there's like a lot of taboo and stigma in the society. So, you know, as an artist, I felt like it was my duty to, you know, let people know it's normal, like things do happen to us, you know. Absolutely. So with that, would you love to sing along the first song for us and our audiences in fact and get them to know that what kind of music you have for us in store? <laughs> All right, sure. Um, so this is my debut single. It was back in 2015. <laughs> it's such a very young song. So it's called My Oh My. I hope you guys like it. Amazing. So that with 
that I really have a lot more curiosity. Now, what are the next numbers going to be from coming up from TK? So quite interesting. So, you know, when you hear about the songs today, many people say that you really don't have much of the people who open up their mouth and sing very properly as how the classical train singers are supposed to be having all these words coming up from the sa to the sa and having a wide range of it. Because we've got auto tunes and it's very easy now yes. to actually change your voices in absolute. <clears throat> but in any manner, has classical training, you know, helped you into making up music when you do and sit and create a song for yourself? Because you have that knowledge also and you are bringing up the music in a different various forms also. So does yeah. that really help? Uh, it really definitely helped me having all the, you know, a proper knowledge of, of music theory and all. So uh, when it comes to production, uh, it helped me in a lot of technical ways. You know, I'll be keeping the counts right. And then I'll be, you know, more open to experimenting new chords and all that. And then different voices that I can try out with the chords. So it has really helped me a lot. And when it comes to singing, uh, I don't have much of a, you know, uh, a good range when it comes to singing, but because of the vocal trainings and the classical trainings, I got to develop this falsetto that makes up for my, you know, higher register. And even, you know, enunciating words, how to use your, uh, you know, head voice, mix your chest voice and all it has, you know, helped me a lot actually. <laughs> So there's a very uh, new upcoming artist also, you know, who actually miss out on these very small, small things which can actually yeah. help them to become a better singer. So as a singer now, what would you like to give them an advice on? Like, you know, are there some kind of a basic exercises what they should daily do so that they can have a good vocal cords, you know, having and singing yeah. up with them? What are some small kind of an exercises which really helps them to have a good singing? Um, I, uh, on the side, I coach uh, young voices. And I teach the piano also. So like what I always tell my students is like, you know, always warm up before any kind of performances, be it small or big. So warming up is very important. Getting eight hours rest is very important before an important performance. So the main focus is to just, you know, relax your muscles uh, in the mouth area. So I give, I give them a lot of exercises. It looks really weird and funny, but you know, that's a must. I do that myself. You, every time I perform, you'll find me backstage doing those lip rolls and all. Lip roll is basically you're rolling your lips like thing. Whoa. So people will be like, what's this guy up to? <laughs> but I'll, I'll probably do all those things, you know, work on the bitch. So those are just a basic things that's really important as a singer and a performer. But when I've been actually talking to all many of the singers there, you know, right now, so the, yeah. every one has a different folk uh, music which has also been associated with the music of Nagas, as they say. So, you know, mm. what do you see? Those music, what you have been hearing into the folk, and now when you hear it that into the fusion formats also, yeah. does that make it sound interesting? Or you feel that, you know, there's some kind of a folk music which really needs to be given exactly the same manner for the generations to understand. Mm -hmm. What exactly do we really mean by our own folk in our tradition? Um, I, do, I do like songs that has like uh, folk influences and all. Like if it's arranged in a proper way, I really love it because it gives that, you know, modern flavor and it gives our cultural flavor to the song. So I really love that. But, you know, uh, I feel like sometimes we should also ground ourselves to make sure that, you know, um, the folk has not been uh, overtaken by this pop sound. Because as a culture, you know, that folk thing has been maintained as a specific, as a particular thing, as a separate thing as well. So fusion is really good, like if we're experimenting and trying to promote, but we should also go back more to the roots. Hmm, that's true. So now when you actually hear up different kind of music, which has been coming up from the folk artist also and from the yeah. independent artist, yeah. how do you see the music being shambling there? Like if you had to define today, what is Naga's yeah. music all about? So how would you define that? Oh, I really love, you know, this uh, new artists coming up, you know, independent artists. They have their uh, thing I feel very proud about the, you know, Northeast artists these days is everyone has that signature sound. No one is like, you know, everyone has is trying to find their own sound, is working on their art instead of trying to copy 
some, some other artists or trying to be like uh, be like them they are trying to you know uh, find their own style and be their own art so that I find it very, very interesting and I've come across so many new songs from you know, Northeast and I like, I've been nothing but impressed. Wow. So now I'm going to be giving you another chance of getting other people impressed by your song because I would request you to sing another song for us. So uh, this is a, one of my favorite tracks from the EP. It's called Chasing Foxes. Oh no, not Chasing Foxes. I'll do Shower Thoughts. <laughs> So... does it actually take to learn to play a keyboard like you? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I mean, I had the upper hand since I've been playing it, you know, since I was in second standard. So, <laughs> so particularly, like, you know, when you, when you talk about more music coming up, so uh, do you actually find out that there's always a beautiful connection of music when you are in your school days, your college days, and yeah. that's how you find out who is a better person to play with you if you have to form a band. And even mm -hmm. you have been having that association with the band, like which is called the Strand Effect. So tell yeah. us the association and how does it work? Like, does it really help you individually also, or it, it enhances you or as a musician? Or do you feel like, you know, when you play with other bands and when you are a part of another band, it has more creativity flowing in and you have got a lot of things to take in with you. So uh, let me just go way back before I get to me for <laughs> So uh, trans effect on us, we have this, uh, we have the same producer. So I got the opportunity to write, co-write one of their songs for them. Uh, it's called I'm on your side. So that's how we got to know each other. And I had the, this amazing opportunity to work with them this time on that uh, Olympic songs that we did for Nagaland. And we just had a plus. There was this connection, there's this, this an immediate connection between us. So it was amazing. And actually, before that, when our producer got married, we got to perform together at the weddings. So that's when we started experimenting on our own different influences. Like I had mm -hmm. my more RB, pop, soul approach. They had their pop band thing approach. And you know, it came out really good and like we should work together. Yeah. And you know, that's how things worked out. And you know, being a trans effect is like, you know, it's amazing. Like they have such good energy. They're very creative with their music. So I have been solo like throughout my entire career so I haven't you know played with much band before and I was kind of skeptical about it because I'm very you know uh strict when it comes to my music so <laughs> people find it I feel like people will find it hard to work on me but working with trans was like so natural absolutely so um if I had to talk about the Nagaland and its uh, music yeah. how do you find to say it now that you know people really take it very seriously now that everybody in the house has a singer coming up? Well, you know, I've been out of Nagaland most of my life. So I don't know much about the scenes that goes on uh, out there. But, you know, with a couple of uh, people I know, artists I know from Nagaland and some gigs that we did together, you know, they're like really hardworking and passionate, you know. They'd be like working with the... I mean, we all are working with the minimum, <laughs> the minimal things we have, and we want the, you know, the maximum output. Maximum output. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so it's like a lot of DIY happens when we record, when we make sounds and all that. So like we share those stories and I'm always inspired by, you know, all this artist working so hard from Nagaland, you know. So with that, we would really love to know which is the next number that you're going to be bringing up for our audiences again. So this is a song that I wrote for my parents and my sister. I don't actually want to say on that, but I'm really grateful that that step was not being taken by you. We would have really missed it in music sales. <laughs> so the best gig you have played so far, which would that be? Oh, uh, technically, I would say another gig, but because of all the emotional satisfaction and all the thing I'd say that pre-debut show I did back in Nagaland at Room 3. Of course, when you talk about Nagaland, they, they, they really take music quite seriously as you were mm-hmm. talking about. And uh, the government has also stepped in by bringing up mm-hmm. different awards, especially the TFMA awards, you know, for the yeah. people to get there. So tell us something about that, that if, when, when the whole system around you, when the people around you, when the cities mm-hmm. around you are very supportive about music, how does that whole aura change of music in true sense? Well, I've seen, you know, uh, people aspect on local artists change over the course of like five, six years. Like five, six years on the line, you know, you put out a song, you put out covers actually. And people will be like, okay, fine. A little skeptical about, you know, making a career in music. But these days, you know, uh, people actually buy your EP. People actually come to your shows, you buy tickets to watch your shows. There are so many award shows happening in Nagaland promoting, you know, and uh, in every aspect of the state programs, music has been taken as a, the main entertainment, as a, and a very important uh, aspect of that program. Absolutely. So with that, we, can we have another song from TK coming up for all these listeners for us? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, this is the song Lights. I hope you guys like it. All my days are strained, mundane. Ever since you left me hanging, hit the like a speeding train.
I tell you, you you play keyboard so well. It takes someone into an absolute meditative state. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great knowing you, TK. Thank you so much for being a part of hashtag the Blue Mic, and we really wish that you we have more independent artists like you coming up, and we have great, great, great luck coming up towards you. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Cut it, cut it, cut it.